Hey guys, my name is Josh, and today we're going to take a look at another C Sharp 7 feature, this one called pattern matching. So in order to explore uh, patterns in C Sharp 7, um, we've got these three classes here, and I've sort of just stolen these from the GitHub issue on patterns. And what they are is, uh, we've got this simple person class here, it's just got a name, nothing too exciting. And then we've got two classes that derive from it. We've got a student that also has a, G a GPA, and then we've got a teacher that happens to teach a subject. And the task sort of set before us is create a pretty print function that accepts a person and sort of um, returns a string with some useful information about each person depending on their type. So, you know, if it's a student, you probably want to give their GPA. If it's a teacher, you want to give their subject, that sort of thing. So we can look at the way you might have done this in C Sharp 6 or older versions of C Sharp here. Uh, first so we can understand sort of the problem um, and the way we might do it is by creating temporary variables for the student the teacher um, we would maybe cast check if that cast succeeded and then um, in this case we might even filter on GPA so if their GPA is above 3.5 then we're going to return that they're an honor student and provide their name and their GPA otherwise if it's just a regular student we'll just return student with name and GPA then we'll do uh, down here another type test uh, to see if they're a teacher. And if they are a teacher, we'll return uh, teacher, name, of, and then their subject. And then finally, we've got sort of this default case here where we just return um, their name if it's just a regular old person. Um, so there's a few things here to notice. Um, some things that are a little bit annoying, like we've got these sort of floating uh, locals up here that are defined and maybe not needed. Like you wouldn't need teacher T if it happened to be a student. Um, they're not sort of close to the area or the scope in which they're going to actually be used. And on top of that, we're doing our type test twice. So we're checking, is P a student here? Is P a teacher here? It'd be kind of nice to only have to do that check once and be able to ah uh, to like act on the result of that check. Just tell me what it is and we only check it one time. Now let's do what we need to do for the, the provided type. So that's sort of... Um, you know, an, an indication of the pain that pattern matching is trying to solve. And if you're familiar with, you know, like F sharp, which has pattern matching, this might not seem too uh, crazy or new to you. But but the way C sharp does it might, like implements it might seem weird. Um, so one way they've they've proposed it is by changing the way the switch statement works, so you can switch on the type of, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, object that comes in here. So I've got this all commented out here. You'll see why in a second. The moment I uncomment it, we get an error in the parser, and these things have been like the bane of my filming of this video because it, it's crashed Visual Studio a handful of times. But if we uh, just leave that window up there for a second, it won't try and reparse things, um, or it doesn't seem to. Uh, it just seems to let them live here and, and doesn't give me those red squigglies or, or crash Visual Studio. Anyways, um, back to the actual the actual lesson. Um, when working with this new switch operator, which can switch on um, person objects, um, what, what we do is now we can switch on type. So we've got case student. Um, we might want to print out, you know, a student. We can say case teacher. And you'll also notice that it creates sort of a, a variable here. So it's like case teacher and T. So now we've got this T, which is a teacher, and we can use its properties and return teacher, name, subject, that sort of thing. Um, in the first example here, you'll also notice that once we've created this, this student S, and we, we've, we're working with this student, um, we, we can filter, we can use this when clause kind of thing to filter on properties so we can filter on their GPA here. Um, and the nice thing to me about, about looking at this example here is that even if I didn't know about pattern matching in C Sharp, like I could come to this code base, um, you know, as a junior dev or whatever, and I would probably be able to interpret uh, what's going on here and understand it. Um, it all reads pretty nicely. Um, the scoping isn't confusing. There's nothing too tricky here. Uh, you know, you just filter on type. Is it a student? Is it a teacher? Um, here's these little variables you can use to interact with their properties, that sort of thing. And I really like um, the approach that that um, they've taken here. One thing that some people might complain about is, you know, is it a good idea to repurpose something like the switch keyword that's been around for so long? Or should we maybe have a new keyword to sort of get this concept across? Um, I don't think it's going to be too much of a pain point. I think they, they're moving in the right direction with this one. Um, and I, I'll be happy to see it if it sticks around uh, as a switch keyword. So that's 
that's one example. We'll comment that out, and then we should be able to ignore this, and hopefully Visual Studio doesn't crash. Cool. And now we'll look at sort of another approach. Um, and actually, I'll leave that open because we're going to sort of compare and contrast the other approach um, that's that's also proposed. And and when I say it's proposed, it's not like they're um, choosing one or the other. They they can live side by side happily. These two these two approaches. Um, and it's sort of to do this thing where we return p, and now there's this new keyword, this match keyword, and it's sort of like a match expression as I understand it. And now inside of here, we can almost put exactly what we had here. Not quite exactly, and we'll see some differences, like, but very similar. The squiggles don't give you any indication of where the actual errors are because um, the language features haven't been dev for this uh, or worked on at all for this yet. But one thing you can't do is you don't have semicolons here. These are expressions, so you don't have return and you don't have semicolon. So we'll go ahead and uh, get rid of all those. You can just have one single expression in these, these cases here. Um, and then finally, this one here, uh, instead of having default, like we would with, with uh, um, switches, sorry, what we do is we do case star, which is like the wild cards. So it's like, like, let anything come through here. So that sort of um, shows you the differences between this new approach and the old approach. Um, other than that, it reads almost the same, like, you know, except for the case, like the English reading of it would come off exactly the same. Um, nothing too different there. You might be wondering like, well, then why have this other approach? Well, there's kind of a nice benefit of having these um, these things be match expressions, and that's that we can just throw them into an expression bodied men member. So we can like, you know, get rid of this. We can just do something like this. So, you know, it's, if you want to keep your code simple and as lean as possible, maybe that's a benefit for you. Um, that's one nice thing. Um, another thing that I'm actually not sure if it's available in the switch example, um, but you can you can match properties not just like using this when, but you can use uh, sort of this is syntax that they're they're sort of changing in C sharp as well. So they're changing the way switch works and they're changing the way is or they're thinking about changing the way is works. So you can do something like, um, it's, notice that I'm getting rid of student s, I'm getting rid of the s here. Here we can put name is, and then like point Dexter, this was the example they gave. And then we might return like, oh, and I better close that off. Like a nerd or something like that. Um, but the important part to notice is that we have this other way of doing things. So when I saw this for the first time and I asked on the issues, I was saying, okay, that's kind of cool. I mean, we can, you don't have to introduce a local here for, for a student. I guess that's kind of nice. You just work with the one property you care about, but like really, couldn't you just do the same thing up here? Like, couldn't we just do s student dot name is equal to extra? Like really what's the benefit here? Cause why would we have two ways of doing the same thing? Um, well, it turns out there's a couple benefits. Um, some of them, which I I don't I have to admit I don't fully understand because I'm not like a pattern matching expert. But we can take a look at some of the examples on the GitHub and some of the ones that haven't been implemented yet. So I can't show you them in, in Visual Studio. But for example, there's this one that says user defined is. So we had this is operator, and it looks like now we're able to, we might be able to, this is a proposal, um, overload it and change what it does. And it's, the, the result is kind of strange. So, so we've got, uh, let's, let's go through this really quickly. We've got this Cartesian here. It's got an X and a Y coordinate. Then we've got a static class. That's important to note. This is a static class. It kind of reminded me personally of extension methods when I saw that it was a static class and a static operator. And then it takes a Cartesian and out uh, a double and then an out double theta. And then it does some math in here, which I haven't, understood for a while now, so I, I couldn't explain it to you, but it does some math and it returns true or false. Is this polar or is this not? And the way they use it down here is they, you know, create a Cartesian. This little C is a Cartesian now. And then they can say, if C is polar, and it's like this is 
polar is, is what gets called into here. So C will get passed in as the first argument. R is coming in here. You notice it's an out, right? And they're not defining R before. It looks like R just gets kind of like created here. And then they've got this star here, which I don't understand. But I, I'm, I'm assuming it just means we don't care about it. Um, historically in C-sharp, when we didn't care about things, uh, people would just use underscore as a variable name. Maybe this is a new way with wildcards to to make these filters easily. What I, but what I really didn't like about it, um, to be honest with you, is that we're doing if C is polar. And, and the way that reads to me is like you would check like is C is person, is student, is teacher. If we're thinking about those old examples, we're checking if this is a class. Well, polar is like a static class. Um, so never in like the history of C sharp was there, you know, was something, you didn't have an instance of a static class. So now we've got this sort of weirdness where it feels like if I was to read this, like as someone new to C sharp or relatively junior or wasn't familiar with the feature, like I'd be checking to see if something was a, a static class. And you know, that feels wrong to me, but but smarter minds than I are working hard at this, so maybe they'll come up with something better, or maybe this provides such immense benefits that I don't understand um, fully. One other example I got, um, and we'll just hop down to my question here. I was asking about, um, you know, why do we have these two ways of doing what seemed like the same thing to me? It looks like you can sort of nest these these cases, so you can have, you know, is their course an online course? Their professor is of type tenured professor. So now you're doing like type checks nested inside of one another, um, that sort of thing. Um, one other thing to notice about this, and he, he shows it here, is that in this example here, I'm checking if name is point Dexter. We can also do this sort of weird thing where we do like if name, let me see if I can remember this, is var Dang it, it crashed. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to fix this really quick. Okay, sorry about that. It crashed while I was doing it. Um, what I was trying to do was I was trying to type out essentially what's happened here now. Um, where, where before I was doing name is point Dexter, and it was like checking if name was point Dexter, at least that was my understanding of it, then printing out a nerd. Now we've got this it seems weird to me. We've got this this way where we're going uh, GPA is, and now it's not like we're checking it against something. We're like putting it into a variable. So like now down here we can do my GPA variable. And it didn't show up in IntelliSense, but you can tell that it's, it, it's real by the fact that if I do like this, uh, we get uh, error squiggles. So so that, that variable has now been declared in his scope and works correctly. Um, so this is another thing I'm not quite understanding. Um, I still have to review the, I'm not good at reading grammars. Like I'll, I'll, put, it, I'll put it simply, I'm not, I'm not the best at reading grammars. I still have to review that stuff. I'll see more examples um, before I can sort of make up my mind on this. But hopefully this introduced you guys to, to patterns. It'll give you guys some thoughts there. Um, if this is something you don't want to see in C-sharp, go and participate in the issues. If this is something you definitely want to see in C-sharp, go and participate and, you know, help them guide the syntax and the ideas behind it because I'm sure they, they you know, like to hear real-world solutions from uh, from people who, you, who are going to end up using this sort of code. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed that one. And I think there's actually a branch that might have local refs and ref returns um, that I might be able to make a video with. So that'll probably be the next one. It might be sort of a similar situation to this where like Visual Studio crashes in the middle of my demos randomly, but, uh, but hopefully we can make do it and, and play around with that feature too. Thanks for watching.